In our last episode, we needed to expand our power infrastructure, and we did that by building these 48 power plants providing 3,600 megawatts of power. And in doing so, we were able to turn on our oil rig here to produce plastic and rubber for us, which means that we can grab the plastic and rubber that we need to unlock the industrial manufacturing, which we're going to do now. And here we... Are you serious? We're 14 short. Okay, there we are. And off she goes. And having unlocked that, we've now unlocked the manufacturer, which will allow us to produce more advanced items, such as the computer, which we need to do now, but we also need to sort out the heavy modular frames because we're going to need them for producing the fuel generators, which is the next thing we need to unlock, and trains which is really important because at the moment everything is being transported by conveyor belts or failing that by hand which means i have to do a long run back to base with all of these we need those trains unlocked even if it's just for building resources. Now we are going to kick this video off running by building some computers, but I'm actually gonna skip ahead. This is just a very basic factory that we've built. So we're going to build that. I'm going to show you it roughly, and then we'll get over to the bigger build, which is going to be those heavy modular frames, which we need. And here it is. It may not look like much. Like I mentioned, it is temporary. We're going to be gutting it all out eventually. So for now, we're just taking some plastic over there and producing the computers. The reason why I built this here was because it was firstly on the way to the power plants, but secondly, because there is iron and the copper around here, which we need. So the only thing we needed to bring over was our plastic. And we built all of this during a couple of live streams. Speaking of which, you can join me over on twitch.tv forward slash total eclipse if you would like to see me do these builds in person uh, as we do everything there pretty much. So this is the build itself. It's only producing a handful. It's something like five, I think maybe even less than that, five computers per minute. Uh, I haven't underclocked this, so yeah, five, let's go with that. So on the top floor, we have the manufacturers and we also have all of the assemblers, whereas on the bottom floor, we're just handling all of the basic outputs. So we've got our copper sheets that we're producing, our cable, which we're doing from iron wire, and also our screws. Now, I'm not sure where I want my proper computer factory, but we do need to unlock some more alternate recipes for that so that we can optimize the amount of resources we're using. And we'll turn this into a train station to take all the resources back. So I presume, depending on the recipe, we'll probably build the computers around here still. Actually, that works really well if we want to use the Caterium computers because we've got a Caterium node just across the lake. Hmm ideas. Regardless, the important thing for us to do in today's episode is to build some heavy modular frames. Now we're going to be using the standard recipe for this one because we haven't unlocked anything else, but hopefully we'll be able to expand on it later on once we've got the train network on the go and also a bit more power because that is what we're working on at the moment, the expanded power infrastructure. Oh, if you're wondering why I've got 1.0 speculations there, just realized I've left that in. That's because we're talking about it in our stream at the moment, what we expect to come for 1.0. Uh, I should probably clear that out the way moving forwards, but just so you know. Now, the big question about this factory is where we're going to place it. We need coal, we need iron, and we also need limestone for this build. And I thought the best place, at least for this factory, is actually going to be where we're already producing some encased industrial beams, which is over by the arch here. At this blueprint build of the encased industrial beams, we are going to be showing off in a future video as well. So don't worry if you're interested in that, it's coming. Now we're not going to be building a massive factory here. Well, I say that, we're not going to be producing too many heavy modular frames, but we are going to need to produce a lot of items for them because we're just using the vanilla recipe. Uh, now that I've set out my foundations, maybe I should get a sky view of this. Here you go, it's, it's quite sizable. Well, we're now going to start building the production. We do have a floor underneath this. This is going to be for all the logistics to keep everything clean on the top floor for us. And we're going to start building the smelters here. So we will do, I think 13 in total is how many we need. It's something like 12 point six or, or something like that. So here we have our 13 smelters and we're going to do some walling around the outside. 
Uh, I have this idea to try and build out the corridor and so we'll compartmentalize each section and we might even use glass walls so that we can see what's going on within the factory and then we'll play around with lighting and shadows uh, for Lumen. The next thing that I want to do is also to build the foundries. We're going to need 10 of these so we'll start here and we'll do five on each side and then we'll do the same here. Okay so that's the smelting and the foundries kind of sorted in terms of placement. We may even have to extend outwards a bit more because we've got a total of 40 constructors and 20 assemblers to place along here. And here's the layout that we've got so far. So on the left hand side we have our iron plates, on the top we have our iron wire and in the same building on the lower section we have our iron rods. To the right of that we have our concrete, then to the right of that we have our steel screws, below that we have our three constructors which are going to be for steel pipes and then to the left of that we have six constructors for steel beams followed by our steel foundry and our iron smeltery that you saw us building just a moment ago. So I'm quite happy with what we've got so far. I do need to build up some walls and some glass around them now that we've got this grid uh, layout for our build. That should take me only a few seconds. Hopefully. One minute, 37 seconds later. And you can see I've started doing the walling. I just wanted to quickly show you that I've also added some pillars across the top. This is going to be for our cable management and we'll connect all of the rooms together. So hopefully it's going to look pretty clean once it's done as well. So we are getting on with this. We've started taking the resources down, though we haven't set up the lower floor yet. And I've also added this. Uh, roof. I think we're going to have to lift this up higher, but I like the idea of the majority of the natural light to come in through these glass uh, roofs. And then we'll use lighting and maybe signs to accentuate the actual factory elements. The next two things that we need to do are the logistics floor and also the floor below, which is going to do all of the assemblers work. So that's the encased industrial beams, the reinforced iron plates, and one other which I've forgotten. Oh, the modular frames, of course. Now I'm going to do a similar build system by compartmentalizing it all, but we are going to play a little bit with the design of the inner walls. And as you can see, we're already off to a good start here. And this is the kind of thing that I want to replicate on this side with a little bit of difference. So we're going to be placing the concrete pillars in between each of these smaller sections. And then I want to do the large metal pieces in between. But we do also need to do one more thing and that is to grab these small framed pillars and we're going to place them inside there. And then we're going to do this setting or this technique over on this one as well. So it should look pretty cool once done. And all of the resources, as you can see, are being brought down and then taken back up, uh, which is where we're going to have to draw all the resources to this floor and to work out where they're going from here. So I've just been working on the loading floor and I've realized I've given myself just enough room. And I say just enough because we've got another layer for the downstairs uh, here, for example. And so we're going to find that we're wrestling against the top manifold and the lower for this. So I highly recommend when you're trying to do a load load loading floor, a logistics floor, that's the word I was looking for, that you make sure that you have more than one, well, five meters worth of foundations. Really, you're going to want to have uh, eight or so, eight meters, so two large ones. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have a, a lot of tight spaces. Speaking of which, I'll show you the whole system. We're going to skip ahead to that now because there's, there's nothing fun about watching me struggle with logistics, right? <laughs> right? And here we are with the logistics floor complete. Pretty tight. Okay, and the last thing that we need to do here is just to sort out our resource lines for our manufacturers. So here we have the steel screw line. We also have uh, next to it, this one, the steel pipe line and then alongside that we're also going to have this line which is our encased industrial beams and this one which is our modular frames. So we're going to run these all the way along the outside here like 
so and then these will all hopefully go in the right direction across and then up to the heavy modular frames manufacturers once we've got that set up. Speaking of which, that's the next thing that we need to do. Let's look at where we're going to be doing the heavy modular frames now. So we're going to have to, I think, place down some kind of wall here. I think this will be where we do it. We'll have our heavy modular frame manufacturer here. Maybe we'll do two, or maybe we'll just overclock one. We'll also need some kind of awesome sink. Oh, I have uh, enough resources. So we'll probably do that over this side. I'm gonna have to play with this a little more, I think. Do we have enough resources for the manufacturers? No, yes. So we have enough for two manufacturers by the looks of it, but I think one will probably be better just overclocked because we don't want to be having to worry about splitting the resources off. I need to sort out that Z fighting. But I have to say, regardless of the Z fighting, I'm really happy with this process. And I'm really excited to see how everything looks in its own compartment once it's all running. We've actually got the top floor running now. I still need to get the stuff sorted from the bottom floor. But first, let's sort this section out. Ugh. There we go. Just change it to one type of flooring. It's still there. Oh, is that a quarter or a half foundation? Because half foundations don't allow us to do this. Much better. The other thing I should mention, we've brought everything up from the elevators here. And then we bring them... Well, we bring them up from this section and then down over here. Goodness me, my English. Words escaping me today. But you can see how we've run that. If I just drop down here, you can see we've run it past the walkway and then wrapped it round at the back. I thought this was probably the cleanest way of doing it. Wait a second. Why is... Why is none of this running? Wait a second. What? No, 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 no. Wait, why? Oh, um... We can see it here, here. Oh wait, this is this is the feeding line. It's this line that we need to check. They're all fine. Wait a second. They're there. So it's from this line. I know the issue. Um, if we just squeeze it, this is the problem with having really tight logistic floors. You see this section? Having the, the, the manifold and the merging line so close is never a good idea. <sighs> I knew it, friggin' knew it. Well, it looks like I'm gonna be cleaning up this for a while. Hopefully it hasn't happened anywhere else. Would also explain why we haven't got any resources coming up there. Well, I will sort that out and then we'll get on to decorating uh, once we've got our first heavy modular frames built. And here we are a little bit further on. We're now producing heavy modular frames ever so slowly, but we are producing them. Um, if we go over to here, you'll see we've got quite a few already on the go. The next thing that we need to do is to start on the decoration aspect of the, uh, the, the build. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I kind of like the idea of having a walkway along here. I'm not sure if we'll do that though. The, but the first thing that I need to do is to sort out the exterior walls. We're going to need to fill this all in and then we're going to start building off of that. So give me a few moments and we will turn this into something like this. And don't worry, we're not done there yet. There's a couple more things that we need to do. First, we need to change this color because, well, firstly, it's just very yellow. <laughs> and secondly, you guys know that I'm not big with colors. I am trying to implement colors more, but I think this is a bit much. We could certainly play around with the yellow. Um, let me, give me one moment. That doesn't look terrible against the yellow, but I think we should try some different colors. Maybe more of an orange instead of the blue. Or even partnering those two together could work quite well. Okay, we can work with this for now. My only concern is it's a bit too bright, but it's better to play around with the colors now before 1.0 and get them wrong than it is to find at 1.0 we've got a terrible paint scheme. So we'll play with this for the time being. As for the inside, we do want to add some signs. Uh, you, you know what? I actually hate this floor design. Perhaps, let me just... I'd really like to unlock in the customizer this. It's six coupons though. That's quite quite extortionate. Oh, 
would help if I connected this up. And at this point, we should have our awesome sync on. Yes, so we've got the coupons that we need for this. Only thing is we've got a, a little tick inspector walking around. He's a little stuck in here, but uh, I mean, could be worse places to be stuck, right? Let's unlock that. And here we are with the new flooring. And I have to say, I absolutely love the inside of the factory at the moment. We certainly could use some decals and maybe some signs, but for now, I'm really happy with this. I also feel that the color scheme works really well, specifically inside. I'm, I'm umming and ahhing about the outside of the factory, but inside this looks fantastic. So guys, if you do like the look of the factory, do hit the thumbs up. And obviously if you haven't already, do make sure to subscribe if you want to see more. But with us now producing those heavy modular frames, there's only one thing left to do. And that's to grab a couple of stacks of these and head back to base, because we've got trains to unlock. And here we go. Let's unlock those trains. But guys, we are going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to all of our amazing supporters, most notably our Solo Clips patrons, James Irwin, Fireflesh, and Trebor, as well as our Lunas, the Calamity, Ben, Star, Shoku, the Emin Wolf, and that dude AW, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is the City Rat. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.